So, it's time. We're going to head back into the Exchange Admin Center and configure our Exchange server. Before we can proceed, there are a couple of things that we need to take care of. First of all, you need to open up port 25 and forward it to your mail server. This will allow the server to receive emails from the internet using SMTP. The protocol used is TCP. You will also need to be able to send via port 25, but in most cases this will not require any additional configuration. Next, you will also need to set up an MX record for your domain in your external DNS. I used the priority 10 and the default time to live 3600 seconds, and the target should be your external IP address. From there on out, your router will have to sort out the rest. When you sign into the ECP, you will notice that the administrator account that has been created has an email address that doesn't use the techno.se domain, because we haven't specified it yet. As kiwi.local is not publicly routable, we will need to add our external domain. To do this, we're going to open up Mailflow, you're going to go to Accepted Domains, and you're going to press the plus sign. You have to enter a name, which you can call anything, but I'm just going to call it Technot and you have to enter your external domain, which in our case is technut.se. You have to select authoritative domain, because this is a domain that is hosted on this server, so just go ahead and click save. This does not make the domain default, but changing that is real simple. Just double click it to open up the settings again, and check the box to make it the default domain. But if you create a new mailbox at this time, it will still use the kiwi.local email address, so we have to change the email address policy. Changing the default policy is just fine, so we're going to go ahead and open that up. As you can see, we can change anything here, but we can go into the email address format, and as you can see, it's currently specified to be at kiwi.local. So, I'm just going to click the pen, scroll down a bit, and enter technot.se. We're going to save this. And as you can see, this will apply to everyone. If you want to have special policies, you can create more of them and then just sort them. So, we're going to go ahead and save that. You will get a warning saying that we need to apply this. And you do this over here. You will say that this can take a very long time, but we only have one user, so I know for a fact that this will be very fast. So, we're just going to click yes. And we're done. If we head back into the recipient configuration, we can see that the administrator account still has the old policy, but if we try to refresh that, it displays the correct email address. But having an email organization with only one user isn't much fun, so we're going to add another user to see if we can get some mails going within the organization. So, we're going to click the plus sign, I'm just going to create a new user. The alias is what will end up in front of the add symbol, so we're just going to call this test user. This is a new user. Just going to test user. If I can spell that correctly, we're going to have to give him a logon name. So we test user. We can only specify kiwi.local because this is, of course, the internal domain, the UPN, if you will. I'm going to enter a password for the user, and I will not require a password change. So what I'm going to do now is head into the mailbox of the administrator. To do this, I'm going to open up a new tab, enter the address to the email server, kvex01, and instead of typing in ECP, I'm going to type in OWA. This will open the Outlook web app. The first question that I get is what kind of language I want to use, and what my time zone is. This looks quite alright, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. So, to send an email, of course you hit the new email button. We're going to enter test user, was it? I'm actually going to search for that user. And it finds it right away. Now we're going to specify that this is a test email. Now, I'm going to change account and head into the test user mailbox. As you can see, we have a new email from the administrator, and I can reply to that just fine.
After just a few seconds, the email arrives. So let's have a look at a few more Mailflow settings. If we go into Receive Connectors, you will see that there are already some stuff configured. This means that the exchange is already ready to receive emails. All you have to do is get the port forwarding right and set up your DNS record in your external DNS. So we're gonna give that a try. So we're recording again and I've gone into my email account. Actually, I might just change my Gmail account. And I created an email to send to the administrator user. So I'm just gonna hit send. And we'll see if we get something. And as you can see, very quickly, we receive an email from Technot Media, which is actually just a Gmail account. Sending emails is another story. Replying to this email simply wouldn't work because we don't have any send connectors. So we're gonna head back into the ECP and open up send connectors. We're gonna try to add a new one. We're gonna call this one internet and it's gonna be used for internet email. Simple emails that we write over the internet. To do this, you can specify two things. You can either have an MX record associated with the recipient domain, which basically means that your server will be sending this email. You can also have other SMTP servers doing this for you. If you have an ordinary internet connection for home usage, there is a fairly big chance that sending emails from your server has been blocked by your internet provider. In that case, you should try to configure route mail, smart hosts, and select your internet provider's SMTP server. I'm going to show you how to do this both ways. Basically, when selecting the MX record option, all you have to do is just select it and check the box to use external DNS lookup. When it comes to the address space, we're going to use this for all unknown addresses. So, we only have to enter an asterisk in this box. Next, we have to select the source server, which is very simple, because we only have one. Remember to click add, and OK. And you can finish it off. So, if you have the availability to send emails via your internet provider, then this should be up and running by now. However, I'm going to show you the other option as well. We've got a blank page again, and we're going to do the different one. Still calling it internet, selecting internet, and roughly smart hosts. You still check the box to use external DNS lookups. This is, of course, to find the smart hosts. And what you want to do is enter a server name of the server that will transport these emails for you. I'm going to enter something here, because I'm going to explain to you in a little bit why this was tricky for me. So we're going to enter smtp.techno.se just for reference. We're going to go ahead and click next. Most, in most cases, you will need to enter some kind of authentication. This could be it's usually something that you will get from your enterprise when you create a mailbox, for instance, and you should be able to use these details. You can also say exchange server information, but this is more for use at companies who have their own smart host servers. Uh, I'm just going to select none for now because this is just a test. Once again, you have to specify the address space, which is asterisk and a source server. And you're finished. However, I ran into some problems. My internet provider has an SMTP server but it's not fully compatible. So I will actually have to change this and do some kind of custom configuration. If you're interested in this, I will put it in a separate video, but I don't think this is gonna to apply to all of you. My special send connector is now set up, and I'm gonna to try to reply to the email sent to the administrator account. So we're just gonna enter a message saying something nice to myself. And I'm sending this, and it will arrive on my other screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and reply to the email so that you can see that it actually went through. And there is our reply. So as you can see, the main flow is not working. We're now fairly close to having a fully functional Exchange server up and running. However, there will be one more part of this series. We're going to go through Ultra Discover and external access in that episode. If you found this video interesting, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And don't forget to subscribe.